House of Ed Tech, episode 35. Hi, everyone. I'm Jenna Klein from Class Dojo, and you're listening to the House of Ed Tech podcast with Chris Nessie. This episode of House of Ed Tech is brought to you by todaysmeet.com. Welcome to the House of Ed Tech podcast. I am your host, Christopher Nessie, and the House of Ed Tech podcast explores how technology is changing the way teachers teach and the impact that technology is having in education. My objectives include discussing technology that is changing our classrooms and schools and sharing tools and tips you can hear about today and use tomorrow. I talk to teachers, leaders, and creators like you and have them share their stories. The purpose? Whether you use it or not, technology is changing the way we teach and how our students learn. And welcome back inside the House of Ed Tech. I am so glad you could join me today. I have a great episode. I have a lot of really awesome content to share with you. I have the regular segments, an Ed Tech thought, an Ed Tech recommendation, which comes to us today from Dan Gallagher. So thank you for the first time to Dan for contributing some feedback and also a recommendation for all of you to enjoy. And of course, I always have the House of Ed Tech VIP. My featured content today is my conversation with Miguel Kudry. He is the founder and CEO of helphub.me, which is a really great service website for tutoring and connecting teachers to students really all over the world and in every subject. So that's a really great conversation, and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. Before I get to that, a couple of uh, points of interest. First, I went to Ed NATO on April 25th, and I got to tell you, Ed NATO was a great conference. And I know that some of you listening, you sat in on my session, stop curating and start creating, and you got to meet me. And I got to share with you a little insight into the world of podcasting. And you may be listening to this podcast for the first time, or this is your first episode since that conference session. So thank you so much for tuning in and checking out the House of Ed Tech. What can I say about Ed NATO in addition to that? It was the best conference day I have ever attended. The reason is because I got to take the connections that I have on Twitter And I got to hang out for a day, I got to present, and I got to meet and talk face-to-face with a lot of awesome people who I've previously done that with, and also with people who I have recently met in the last school year. I want to give a shout out to the Ed Justice League, my friends Stacy, AJ, Danny, Adam, and Christine. We are looking forward to an Ed Camp Philly team up, and also the Ed Justice League will be at uh, tomorrow's Classrooms Today on June 26th in Philadelphia before ISTE 2015. And I got to say, it was great to spend time and sit in on AJ and Christine session, Batman and Robin from the Ed Justice League, and also on Danny and Adam's first ever conference presentation where they talked about back channeling. And they also spoke very highly of, uh, of my sponsor, Today's Meet. As always, if you're interested in checking out Today's Meet, go over to todaysmeet.com slash House of Ed Tech and check out the teacher tools and how you can add back channeling to your classroom. Now, I have some big news here on today's show, and that is I have sold out. Well, not really, but the House of Ed Tech is a proud inaugural member of the Education Podcast Network. What is the Education Podcast Network? Well, let me tell you, as long as I have your attention. It's a new podcast network dedicated to bringing you podcasts for educators, and they are podcasts that are created by educators. You can find all the great content on the network website, which is edupodcastnetwork.com, and the following podcasts are also members of the Education Podcast Network. First up, we have Angela Watson's Truth for Teachers, and uh, you recall I had her on a couple of episodes ago, well, really the last episode, episode 
number 34. And we have Principally Speaking by Jason Bodner. And I would like to give a shout out and congratulations to Jason, who is going to be moving to a new school where he will become the principal of a high school in Indiana, where he is from. And congratulations to Jason. We have one of my favorite podcasts, the Principal PLN Podcast, hosted by Teresa Steger, Spike Cook, and Jessica Johnson. Very happy to be working with them on the network. Who else do we have here? We have Instructional Tech Talk by Jeff Herb and his new co-host, John Samuelson. And we also have another podcast from Jeff Herb, Ed Tech You Should Know, which is his short-form podcast, usually about five to 10 minutes, real quick, real easy. So Ed Tech You Should Know. We have from the TeacherCast Broadcast Network, two podcasts. We have the Tech Educator Podcast, which I appear on pretty regularly, and that's on uh, Sunday nights at 7 Eastern Time on TeacherCast.tv. And that, of course, is hosted by uh, Jeff Bradbury with a cast of others like myself, Sam Patterson, Jeff Herb, Josh Gauthier, and uh, David Saunders. So you can check us out on Sunday nights on TeacherCast.tv. And also Jeff Bradbury's new podcast, which is related to podcasting called Educational Podcasting Today, which can be found at EducationalPodcasting.today, where Jeff teaches you how to start a podcast and do podcasting as a teacher, either for yourself or with your students, and how to use a great tool like WordPress.org or WordPress.com and methods of hosting and creating podcast content. And uh, the network also has a video podcast from Dr. Brad Gustafson. You may have heard of it called 30 Second Take, which is uh, a fast-paced video podcast that pits two people in a digital duel. Uh, Brad does a fantastic job. You can connect with Brad uh, at Gustafson Brad on Twitter and check out his show, The 30 Second Take. And also uh, the final podcast on the network to start uh, is Techlandia Radio, hosted by John Samuelson and a cast and crew of what it seems like is thousands. Some great podcasts here on the Education Podcast Network, which again, you could check out at edupodcastnetwork.com. And you can also, and I do recommend that you follow the network on Twitter, and the Twitter handle is edupodnet. If you're looking for great education content that you want to consume in podcast form, go to edupodcastnetwork.com. I'm very excited about this opportunity and I'm looking forward to collaborating. And in a future episode, I will have all of these network hosts on in a all-star smash-up episode where they will talk about their podcasts and what they're about. Uh, one last thing about podcasting, there's a fantastic new app for podcast consumption or really content discovery, and it's called Clamor. And that's C-L-A-M-M-R. Right now it's available in the iOS store, so you can search Clamor. What Clamor does is it presents short audio clips, 18-second clips, that are highlights from podcasts or maybe audio clips from a, uh, a website article. And it covers all topics, sports, technology, education, information, science. What you find on Clamor is in these 18-second audio clips, you get a short description that you can read of the clip, and you'll also have a link on the clip to go to listen to the full audio or go to a website or a blog to read more about that little audio snippet to kind of entice you and preview into the content. What makes this really cool is that the app, it just goes through and plays these clips back to back to back. You don't have to really think about it, but if you do want to listen to more, you can click the button on the bottom that says read more or listen to the full uh, audio clip. Uh, House of EdTech is on there. And if you want to see the snippets I've created or kind of preview, if you, if you miss an episode, you can go on and you can just search House of EdTech and there's no spaces when you do the search. So I do recommend, and here, I guess that's a bonus House of EdTech recommendation to check out Clamor. So search that in the iOS store and you can also go to clamor.com and, uh, and check it out. And for you Android users, that is uh, hopefully coming soon. And speaking of Android users, if you're consuming this podcast on an Android device, if you go over to chrisnessy.com and you click on House of Ed Tech, you will now see the, uh, 
the Android alien robot button. And through Blueberry, there is now an, uh, you have the ability to one click subscribe. If you have some type of pod catching app on your Android device, you can click this and you can subscribe. So if you're on Android or you know somebody who's on Android and you happen to recommend the House of Ed Tech to them, you know, you can direct them to chrisnessy.com and uh, show them how they can one click subscribe to the podcast on their Android device. Let's, uh, let's transition a little bit and let's go right into my featured content. Sit back, relax, and enjoy my conversation with Miguel Kudry of helphub.me. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome in this episode's featured guest, Mr. Miguel Kudry. He is the founder and CEO of Help Hub Services. He's an entrepreneur with interests that lie in social media marketing, as well as web development, which is good here on the House of EdTech. He has his degree in business administration and management from Douglas College in British Columbia. And he was also named by 24 Hours Vancouver as a top 24 under 24, which is really cool. And uh, he's probably so far the coolest, youngest guest I've had here on the podcast. And as I said to start, he's also the founder and CEO of Help Hub. So welcome to the House of Ed Tech, Miguel. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Chris. And I also have to say that you are my second international guest, so I'm very excited about that. Very good. That's awesome. I found Help Hub because one, one I'd heard of it, and then it actually just so happened that your community manager, Mitzi Figueroa, reached out to me via email and basically hit me with a virtual stick and said, you, you need to talk to Miguel. You need to find out more about Help Hub. And uh, so uh, that's my shout out to Mitzi, as I said I would do. Um, <laughs> so say some good things about Miss Figueroa. Well, I'm, I'm glad she reached out to you. She's, she's actively uh, looking for, for really interesting people to talk to and to get feedback uh, about our product. So people like you that, that have a really good insight on, on ad tech products and the education space. So um, she, she was uh, doing uh, uh, her, her good job, and, and I'm, I'm glad that we're, we're, we're talking right now. Awesome. So, so thank you to Mitzi, who I know will listen to the episode and, uh, and, get, and get a good laugh out of this. And, and that's what we're doing here. Definitely. Ha- having a good time. <laughs> exactly. You're the CEO. You, you, are, you are Help Hub. So what is Help Hub for all of us who, who maybe don't know? So Help Hub is an open marketplace for tutoring. Um, the idea is to connect students with tutors and people that can help them anytime and anywhere. Uh, so we connect students with tutors via instant messaging and tutoring calls, and we do that on the web and iOS. If you need help with a single question and you want to talk to somebody that can help you, you go to Help Hub, you search for the subject. We have virtually any subject um, that you can get help with, and you can talk to a real expert uh, about it. Um, so you, whether it's a single question that may only take you five minutes to answer, and off you go, or you need weekly sessions with a tutor and you need to prepare for, a, for an exam or for a, for a big test, we can help you with that. So we have, we have thousands of tutors that are available to help you, and, 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 and we, we make it very flexible for, bo- for both the tutor and the student to, to connect on our, on our platform. Very cool. And, and here on the House of EdTech, we just don't hang out in the shallow, and we like to you know, go right into the, uh, into the deep end of the pool. With a background in marketing and, and development, you, you have a technology background. Where, where does the inspiration come from to create a network and a product like this? Um, it, it comes from the, the, very, the very need of, of being a student. I mean, I, I was a student. I was going to school. And I'm also an international student here in, in Canada. So I didn't have many people to talk to. Uh, and, and when you're kind of by yourself preparing for a test or an exam and – I particularly would would get stuck in a question, and I would actually close the book and try to work on something else, and that just let um, that that just translated into bad marks and and some bad results. So I wanted to be able to talk to people about a specific question. I didn't want to go through the very traditional um, uh, approach of of trying to set up a session with a tutor, going to a coffee shop, or going to the library and meeting with them for for a whole hour if I didn't really need that hour. Um, I wanted to ask a single question and move on. So, so that's why I built I built the site. I, I initially um, Help Hub was initially a phone tutoring marketplace. So the idea was to simply connect with people over the phone, uh, just like you would call a friend. Always keeping 
making making sure that privacy is always um, our, our our top priority. We never share personal information. We would we would never share somebody's phone number, uh, and making sure that a tutor was actually making money for for that time. So one of the one of the big um, differentiations of, of Help Hub is the ability for for a tutor um, to choose how much money they make uh, helping others. So you could you could right now sign up as a tutor on Help Hub and choose your own rate and and start talking to students. Um, and you would decide uh, how much money you're going to um, make for that for the time that you spend on, and that gives you the the ability to just work on on a single question for five minutes. You don't need to leave where where you are. You do need to drive somewhere or or take the bus somewhere and 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 pre book a whole session, a whole hour or an hour and a half, which is what what what's what what happens usually. Um, you can just answer that question and help the student from right from your phone, for example. So we give you that flexibility. And I just that that translates into more flexibility for students. And that's why that's what I was looking for as a student um, back in college. One thing led to another and now we're we're an interactive marketplace. We do instant messaging. Uh, there's there's quite a few uh, tools for students and tutors to connect and and we hope to continue to grow as we go. Now you've touched on it a little bit. Uh, you started as a phone service. Now, what types of technology are available for students to be able to connect with educators? So we connect students and tutors via instant messaging. Uh, most of our sessions, I have to say, uh, are written lessons. So a student will simply talk to a tutor and they'll, they'll chat for, for hours, sometimes for a couple of minutes, sometimes for, for a long time. Uh, but they, they do it in, in tiny bits, in tiny pieces. So they, they won't talk for a whole hour. They might talk throughout the entire day, but just five minutes here, 10 minutes there as they, as they work on their homework. Um, we also do video calls. And on a video call, you have a whiteboard application. You can do drawings. So that allows you to do math problems and, and other sorts of drawings. You can exchange files. Um, you can chat as well. And we, we continue to have our phone calls um, for students that have already built a relationship with our tutors and just want to give them a call. They can do that from a tutor's profile. What do you find is the most popular method that those connections are being made? Because – on the website, the feature I found really attractive was the video chat with the whiteboard feature. I would say it's definitely instant messaging. Um, we f- we see that students are, are a bit shy. They they don't necessarily want to talk to a tutor face to face right away. They they definitely need to know get to know the tutor. Um, they would message a few tutors at the same time. They won't necessarily talk to a single tutor at the beginning. So they get to know a tutor. They'll they'll talk about their homework. They'll talk about their problems. We'll talk about the upcoming exam of next week, and once they're they're comfortable with that tutor, they sometimes they just continue to work on uh, the problem via chat. They they never jump on a call, but then if if they're comfortable, if they do need to speak, if there's if they need to talk about a long uh, subject, or if if they just feel more comfortable just talking about it, they they'll jump on a call. Uh, but most sessions definitely happen uh, via chat. Now, obviously, there there are two sides to this. There is the uh, the interface and how the student uses Help Hub, and then there's also the teacher side. First, let's talk about how a student accesses Help Hub, and basically, how, how does a student get started? For teachers listening, what can they tell their students about how to use the tool? We give students a lot of power to find the right person that they can get help from. Um, so a student will be able to right now go on Help Hub, search for a subject, and see a list of tutors, and they can go to their profiles. We allow them to see uh, specific credentials and, and uh, tutors' profiles include their um, what they can actually tutor, so all of their subjects. Um, they can add a little bit of information about themselves, a little bit of a biography and some of the, their experience. And they also include where they went to school. Um, so being able to know where a tutor goes to school uh, it, it, it's, it's really uh, effective for, for a student because they can actually get an insider's point of view and potentially um, the courses they're actually getting. They could be getting help from somebody that took the same course that they took at their school. Um, so we see we see a lot of that and we see that students like to browse around and really find the right person. Um, and we also give students the, the possibility to post a question um, that automatically reaches out to our entire community. So say that you're, you're, you're working on, on a math problem right now and you don't really want to go through the list of tutors and you don't want to go one by one. You post a question, you add the, 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 sub, the subject you're working on, in this, in this case it's math, and then we automatically match your question with thousands of tutors on the site. So t- tutors will actually write 
right to you and you can actually choose who you end up getting help from. That's a very interesting feature. That that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it's it, it works great and it, it it helps students get started on the site in, in a in a much more optimized way because um, we, we give them options instead of them just doing all the work. Now, again, from the student perspective, I go to Help Hub, uh, helphub.me, and what subjects are readily available for students who have questions? Um, we have all, all the major school subjects from K to 12 all the way up to university and, and PhD level. Um, so all the STEM subjects we'll, we cover. We have about 500 subjects that we cover, so all of the basics. Um, and, and we'll also have university-specific courses. So, um, for example, we, we have some robotic courses that are specific to a particular network. Um, so if you wanted to get help from, I don't know, somebody from MIT, for example, you would be able to find that person and you would be able to go to the MIT network page and find an MIT tutor that can help them. Um, that's really valuable for students because we, we essentially have a community page for each and in, in every um, school that we have a presence at. So you as a student, even if you don't go to that school, you could, you could get help from a tutor from that school. So it gives you, it gives you a really good um, um, insider's point of view on, on, on the courses of those um, schools. So that, that, that works great for, for students. Now, you, you mentioned obviously, you know, K through 12 and then obviously at the university level. Do you find that you have a lot of users who come? I, I don't imagine you have kindergartners coming to Help Hub, but do you get a lot of, say, middle school and high school, whether it's Canada or the United States? Definitely a lot of high school. Um, we, I would say we, we have about 50% and 50% of students are, that are going to high school. And by high school, we, we mostly get um, grade 10, uh, grade 10 to 12. And then, so that's about 50% of, of tutoring. Um, and then everything else is, is college, university, um, and then pr- the professional level. Um, we, we have some people that are not necessarily students. They may be getting um, they, they may be doing a course outside of work or outside of their, their profession or, or even on their own, and, and they need to talk to an expert about a specific skill or a specific uh, maybe some, sub, some software that they need to use. Um, we see a lot of that as well. Um, so it's, it's, you see quite a bit of, of uh, different age ranges and different subject expertise students go after. So Now, Miguel, the other side of that, it, we, we know how students get onto the site. How can I, as a teacher or someone listening, become a tutor on the site? What do we have to go through to do that? The, the beauty of Help Hub is that we really allow anybody with knowledge to use that knowledge to help others and actually make money in the process. We have, we have different kinds of tutors. We'll have current students. So these are students that are, that are doing really well in certain subjects and are comfortable enough to actually tutor it. Um, we have um, recent graduates, so people that are almost about to finish school or, or done with school and they want to um, they want to put some of their skills and knowledge to, to, to practice and actually help people. Uh, and then we have professional tutors and teachers and educators that that teach and tutor students on a, on a regular basis that and that's what they do on a full-time basis so they can actually use the site as well. And, and that gives the marketplace a lot of different um, choice, right? Because then you have different price ranges, you have different experience levels, uh, and a lot of different expertise that students can access. So you could right now go on Help Hub, uh, create a profile, um, and 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 add as your the subjects that you tutor that you're comfortable with um, in, in teaching. We'll do we manually vet our tutors um, internally, but we actually most of the process we allow our community to do so. We we drive leads to a tutor's profile, and we'll allow that tutor to. Um, to show that they can actually help students. And it's the student that actually rates the tutor that endorses uh, their individual subjects and actually determines whether they would rec- recommend them or not. And that's how we based our search results. So the more positive reviews you get, the better, uh, the, the more responsive you are with, with the students, the, the more business you're going to end up um, receiving. So, um, But overall, we, we allow anybody that's knowledgeable at something to actually make use of that. And, and it's not just... a the, your your regular traditional subjects you could you could uh, if you're really good at a computer program and, and you 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 dominate that program and you can help people with that you'd be surprised at the number of students that are going after those people and that really need to talk to them and are willing to pay uh, for for that help. So, but obviously, if I go and sign up as say you know Joe Schmo off the street and I just say oh you know I like algebra one. I'm not going to be as successful as the teacher who goes on and has a nice complete profile where I went to school. I have a math degree. I currently teach. Okay. 
Absolutely. We, we actually just launched a resource for teachers called Tutor Academy. Uh, so on Tutor Academy, we, we, we show what are the best practices to use Help Hub to, to better provide a service and to actually get your online presence out there and, and really become a strong profile. Um, so we, we've, we've allowed our tutors to go through um, – it's, it's about a five-step process. It, it's, 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 a, it's really rich content. And at the end of the course, you actually take a test. So we actually determine if you really understand the the way that the site works and, and how to provide a, a great service to to our students. So that we we just launched that this week, and it's, it's been great. Uh, tutors are are going through it, and we're seeing really really good profiles, um, really uh, a lot of responsiveness. Students are not waiting um, to get to to hear back from from tutors, and that really builds a very strong marketplace. So that we're really excited about that. I, I guess you have three sides to this. You have the students, the teachers, and the third side would be Help Hub isn't free. It, it is a service. Can you talk a little bit about your pricing structure and how it works for students and also h- how tutors make money and, you know, I guess that, that third part of it? Absolutely. So as an open market, we allow our tutors to choose their own rates. So once you sign up as a tutor, you determine what your hourly rate is. Uh, we won't tell you how much to charge. We don't set prices. We don't force anybody to pay you. Um, so uh, we're very much of a platform for tutoring rather than just a tutoring company. We want to give you as a tutor the, the tools for, for you to help people and make money. Um, so at the end of the day, you have to, to close the transaction and you have to, to charge for your time, mm-hmm. right? Um, but in that way, we give you the flexibility to, to monetize on, on your time as, as you wish. So say that you're working with a student for 20 minutes, where you would, you would look at your rate, the student would look at your rate on your profile, that gives them um, an idea of how much they can expect to get charged, right? Um, and then for those 20 minutes, you can just charge for those 20 minutes and the student can pay you for that. So you could get a payment for $2 um, and, 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 and that, that would be maybe five minutes of your time. So we give you that flexibility. We won't, we won't, sell it. We won't tell the student hey, you have to prepay for a whole hour. That's not how we work. Uh, we want you and the student to, to come together. And be, sometimes we see a lot of students and tutors negotiate on, on time, come to an agreement, and, and actually work on solving that problem from the student. Is it available or an option for a student to you know, find a tutor? Could they prepay for time? Is that, a, is that available? They can, they can prepay for time. When, when they talk to the, to the tutor, they can schedule a session um, there's there's a, a, there's a scheduling feature behind every tutor's um, profiles, um, so they have the power to to accept and, and deny sessions that are that are pre booked. But at the end of the day, we we give them the tools, and it's up to the tutor to say um, how much they they wish to get paid and and when they are scheduling a session and whether they need to reschedule or not. Um, so that's that's all always between the tutor and the student. Miguel, part of the model again, you talk about how teachers you know, can charge, you know, their, set their own prices. How do you as a company make your money? Because it, it's a business. So, so how does it, it work for you? Yeah. 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 Not, not awkward at all. I'm happy to share how, how we make money. Uh, we actually take a 15% commission fee of all the transactions that a tutor has. Um, so you're able to choose your own rate. And what we'll do is at the moment of, of, of payment, you get a payment and you get a net payment of 85% of, of essentially what you, what you charge. We take that 15% chart, uh, charge on your earnings. Because we have to keep the uh, but the boat floating, and we we have to make some money too. Yes, Mitzi, the community manager, does not work for free. Exactly, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. And how big is is uh, is is your team? Uh, we are actually a, a pretty small team. We're we're three people here in Vancouver, and we have a remote team as well. Uh, but we keep it we keep it small. Um, we we find that we don't really have to have a, a huge team to 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 run a, a marketplace. We make sure that we 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 onboard students and tutors, and and, and we educate them on on the benefits of the platform. Um, and what we see that we need to scale, of course, is the support side of the business. So as we as we grow the marketplace, and as we have more more customers, more tutors, more students to um, to keep track of, we we have to to scale that part. But um, we we keep a pretty lean operation. So to use your own words, and I, I like to insert bad jokes, at, at some point you're going to have a Jaws moment and you're going to need a bigger boat. I will. Yeah, we're working on that. That's the plan for sure. Very cool. I, I am very impressed with the model and and the technology behind it. I, I think it's super useful to, one, for teachers because it's a nice way, again, whether you're a teacher or maybe you're a college student or, I mean, I even thought on the spot, teachers could encourage, you know, 
AP students as, as a way, if you want to make a little extra money, become a tutor. And maybe you're a senior in high school and you're tutoring, you know, freshmen or sophomores and, you know, it's Absolutely. a nice little opportunity there. Yeah. So we see, we see a lot of students uh, that are even, even high school students that are doing really well um, at school there, they become tutors and they continue being tutors when they move up to, to college and university, they continue helping others because they, they get really good at it. They get really good at responding to messages. They, they like the, the idea that they can just be anywhere and, and get a message on their iPhone and, or, or their iPad and, and, and talk to somebody that, that needs their help and that needs to, to talk to, to somebody like them, right? So it, they, they feel good helping others uh, and they, they make a little bit of money in the process. Now, you've also mentioned that you're available on iOS as an app. Is that a free app that tutors and students can use? Yeah, the app is absolutely free to download. Um, if you want to um, pay for, for, for a tutor and you, wanna, you want to get credits, there's in-app, there, there, we have in-app purchases options. Um, so you can, you can add credits through the app, right through the app. You can also um, do that on the web and your credits are available on, on the app. Um, and on the app, we have essentially the core features of the site. So we have instant messaging and video calls. So it's essentially like iMessage and FaceTime for tutoring right on, on, on the app. The best of both worlds. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's something that students are, are really used to, right? They spend so many hours a day chatting with their friends. Um, a lot of them are, are FaceTiming. They're, 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 they're talking to their friends, are connected all day. Um, and we're giving them those tools to actually do well at school and, and for tutors to actually help other community of, of students that we have. So um, we're, trying to, we're trying to provide them with the tools that they're used to and, and making a great use of them. Absolutely. And I think that's really important with, you know, a, a big push, at least around me, is uh, the idea of digital citizenship and not just FaceTiming or tweeting. It's, you know, how can we best use and teach our kids how to use these tools for a greater purpose? and what you guys do and I guess almost app smashing is uh, provide a really great platform to do that with. Now, my last question, what does the future hold for help hub? Anything. And again, since you're the boss, you can determine if you want to, you know, leak any upcoming features, you know, this is a great time and a great platform to give some inside information. Absolutely. So we, we, we're going into the States. The, the future is, is growing our presence into uh, more U.S. schools. We started with a the really strong foot in, in Canada. Uh, now we're looking at the States, and, and we've, we've, we've started a big push. And the idea is to, to be available on any platform. So we're looking at Android. A lot of our tutors are on Android. A lot of our students are on Android, and, and they're, they're asking for, the, for, for an Android app. Um, we really want to understand how students and tutors connect, and and once we we are able to replicate that approach and that model um, correctly, we 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 can look at other platforms. Um, and the the future is really growing the marketplace. We we want to we want to be able to provide truly on demand tutoring help. So that that means that we need to um, bring more tutors on board. We need to have a, a, a growing presence at every single school across Canada and the U.S. And and that's really going to help us. Uh, provide a truly on-demand and a real-time um, source for for help for students. So so that's a goal, and and we're looking at doing that um, this year. And um, by, by the end of the year, we should be available on any platform. That is very good news. <laughs> and, are you I, are you an iOS or Android? I'm an iOS guy. Okay, I, I have some Android stuff that I play around with. So I guess I'm device agnostic. Okay, right, that's. <laughs> So Good. I'm looking forward to exploring, and I, I was I figured you, you would say something about Android or not. So to hear that it is coming, that that is good for for our little green alien Android friends out there. Absolutely, yeah. Um, well, it's, it's 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 important, and 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 it, it allows us to look at other markets as well, and and look at an international expansion too. Um, so that definitely helps. That's true. The more places you can be, the uh, the more places you are. Absolutely. Now, before I let you go, what are some of the ways that you'll allow people to get in touch with you and ask you a ton of questions and pick your brain further about either to refer students or for the teachers listening who want to get involved. Uh, well, of course I have a help hub profile. If, if uh, people want to get a hold of me, I'm available on helphub.me slash Kudry. That's K U D R Y. Uh, I'm also on Twitter, same handle. And I, um, I try to be as, as, as responsive as possible and, and, and to get, back to people as, as quick as possible. But of course, the best way to, to, to reach me would be uh, through Help Hub because uh, I may not be a good math tutor, but I, 
I might be able to to help you definitely with Help Hub and in in any way I can with EdTech and and some of the resources that are out there. Um, so I get my my messages on my iPhone and we're able to maybe even jump in a video call uh, right on Help Hub. So uh, I'm available right there. Now, actually, be, again, it's my show. I can do what I want. <laughs> um, so so I got one last question: If you were going to be a Help Hub tutor, what subject would you feel comfortable? helping somebody else with what's, what's your best subject? Um, I guess I, 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 I'd be comfortable talking about my experience, um, building, building a startup. So I would, I would be comfortable talking about startups. Um, my experience in entrepreneurship, uh, I may not be, um, I know I may not necessarily, uh, give the best advice on, on entrepreneurship, but I can tell you about my experience and, um, definitely about running a marketplace. Um, I think, I think there's, um, their their marketplaces are are a really interesting way to, to to build a community an online community and and finding the balance between your supply and your demand. Uh, we've we've been doing that for the last couple of years and and in any way I can I I'd, I'd be happy to help. Um, and any 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 topic related to to marketing I'm really passionate about marketing. Um, so I'd be I'd be happy to tutor in 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 that area. For for those listening, send your FBLA students and your DECA and you know. Get get some uh, get some ideas on how to start your own business and uh, be very successful. There you go, Mr. Kudry. Thank you so much for taking time here to talk to me all the way from Canada. Again, another international guest. Very excited about that. Uh, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much. Thanks again to Miguel. And I do hope that if you're interested in checking out helphub.me, either recommending it to your students or perhaps as a way for you yourself to make a little extra money tutoring and helping, you know, make sure you go to helphub.me and check it out and let Miguel know that uh, the House of EdTech sent you there. Now, let's move on to my next segment, which is my EdTech thought. This episode's EdTech thought is called Sharing Bookmarks in Google Chrome. Now, recently, Google had their big Google for Work, Google announcement. It was kind of like uh, like a keynote about all the things related to Google Chrome and a whole bunch of Google products. And one of the things that they talked about was their updated bookmark management system in the Google Chrome browser. And they've introduced a really cool way to share your Google bookmarks. Now, I recently wrote a blog post about how to share your bookmarks using the new bookmark manager. And you can check out the link in the show notes to that recent blog post, which is how to share bookmarks in Google Chrome. I just wanted to talk about it briefly here on the podcast because the presentation is really pretty cool. It's pretty slick when you share the bookmarks because it almost, cre- it, well, not almost, it creates a one-off page that is visually appealing. And this would be great in your classroom to share content with your students if you're doing current events or you have specific websites that you need your students to visit on a regular basis, you can create a public folder of bookmarks that you could then share out a shortened URL to your students or tweet out to your kids or send out through Remind, and your kids would have access to these bookmarks. So almost in recommendation format, consider sharing your bookmarks with your students or using this technology through Google Chrome to create something really easy and nice to look at that your students may find useful. And if you want to share content with colleagues, whether in your building or beyond your building, this would also be a great way to do that. Click on the show notes link and check out the link to my recent blog post about how to share Google bookmarks from Google Chrome. And if you share something, share the link with me. I'd love to check it out. And that's my EdTech thought. And now for the EdTech recommendation for this episode, I'm going to bring in Dan Gallagher. He is at Gallagher Tech on Twitter, and that's G-A-L-L-A-G-H-E-R underscore T-E-C-H. And Dan is going to talk to you today about ThingLink. Take it away, Dan. Hello, Mr. Nessie. My name is Dan Gallagher, a teacher resource specialist for technology with the West Windsor Plainsboro Regional School District. My focus there is assisting our K-3 teachers 
with incorporating iPads and smart boards into their classroom. I have a House of EdTech recommendation with ThingLink. ThingLink is a multi-platform tool accessible on a variety of devices which allows a user to create interactive images or videos. Each item, whether an image or a video, can have other items embedded or linked to it. Those include websites, pictures, videos, text, Google Docs, slides, forms, and many others. This tool is great for in the classroom, not only because it is engaging, but it is also very user-friendly. It is what I like to call a freemium tool, where the user can create a free account, and then if they choose to, upgrade to a paid version, where they have the access to some more customizing features. Teachers also have the ability to create student accounts from within their ThingLink for Education account. If the teacher has upgraded to the paid version, the students receive all the features within their account as well. I highly recommend giving ThingLink a try today for either presentations, introducing new material, inquiry or discovery activities, showcasing student work. The possibilities for using ThingLink are endless. I recently completed a project where students had researched a topic of their choosing and included information for their audience to learn about their topic through a ThingLink. Each ThingLink was required to have text, a picture, video, an audio recording, as well as a website link. They also included a Google form to assess whether their audience learned from their ThingLink. We were able to incorporate the concept of accountability within their ThingLinks. There are plenty of resources available through tutorials and webinars, as well as a community of ThingLink expert educators, like me, willing to help answer any questions or discuss ideas. Thank you again to Dan for submitting that EdTech recommendation. Dan submitted a couple of things, which I will be looking forward to using in a couple of future episodes of the podcast. If you ever have your own recommendation or you want to share something that you think other listeners would enjoy hearing about and how you're using it, feel free to send me that feedback either you know, by email or you can send me a tweet or you can record yourself as Dan did and a couple of other people over some recent episodes have done. And I'd love to play that in a future episode of the podcast. So listen up at the end to how you can get that feedback to me. And now the House of Ed Tech VIP. This episode's House of Ed Tech VIP is Mr. Jeff Herb. We heard about Jeff Herb a little earlier as he is one of the podcasters on the Education Podcast Network. Additionally, Jeff is obviously an educator. He's also an administrator and, of course, a podcaster from Illinois. He's currently the associate principal of Dundee Crown High School in Carpentersville, Illinois. Jeff also hosts a number of podcasts, being a ed tech enthusiast. He's currently the co-host of Instructional Tech Talk, which can be found at instructionaltechtalk.com. And he co-hosts that with John Samuelson, as I mentioned earlier. And he's also the host of EdTech You Should Know, which is a shorter form podcast of quick EdTech tips. He's also the co-host on the Tech Educator Podcast on TeacherCast.net, which can be found at TechEducatorPodcast.com. Jeff is doing amazing work in education as an administrator and also a lover of EdTech. I suggest you check out his content, leave him feedback. And you can learn a lot from Mr. Herb. You can connect with Jeff on Twitter. His Twitter name is INST Tech Talk, no spaces. And of course, you can go to his website, instructionaltechtalk.com. Congratulations, Mr. Herb. Jeff, you are a House of Ed Tech VIP. And that's going to do it for this episode of the House of Ed Tech, sponsored by, of course, todaysmeet.com. Check out how you can add back-channeling to your classroom by visiting todaysmeet.com slash houseofedtech. And please keep the conversation going and visit my website, chrisnessy.com. That's N-E-S-I dot com. Over there, you can review the show notes for this episode, number 35, and I would love your comments on the information and resources shared in this episode. You can leave a comment on the show notes 
or you can email the show feedback at chrisnessy.com. And you can also submit audio feedback like Dan Gallagher did. And you can do that by calling the House of Ed Tech listener feedback line. The phone number, as always, is 732-903-4869. And you can also connect with me on Voxer. My username is cnessy4602. And of course, please connect with me on Twitter. My username is Mr. Nessie. And use the hashtag House of Ed Tech to make sure I see any tweets related to the podcast. Now, if you enjoy the House of Ed Tech, please consider rating and reviewing the podcast on iTunes. Your five-star rating and positive review will help keep the House of Ed Tech front and center for others to discover and enjoy. I'd like to say thank you to Sryon2006 for a recent rating and positive review. Sryon2006 said, I love this podcast. I get my PL, which means personal learning, on the go during my commute to and from school listening to these podcasts. Great guest speakers, great conversation and discussion on the progressions of education and technology. Great addition to my PLN. Thank you, Sryon2006. I appreciate your feedback. Thank you so much. You can also show your support for the show through patreon.com by going to patreon.com slash house of ed tech. Jeff Herb, the VIP today, he's a supporter of the show. And I do suggest that you also check out Instructional Tech Talk and consider supporting Jeff's show as well. Thank you so much for your continued support. If you'd like to support the show in other ways, you can go to chrisnessy.com slash p slash support dot html and there's a whole bunch of other ways and things you can do to help out the show now coming up on the next episode of the podcast i'm going to be speaking with finally laura fleming a library media specialist and makerspace guru so if you're into that stuff you gotta come back for episode number 36 with laura fleming as always thank you for listening and remember using technology isn't difficult just give it a try. The House of Ed Tech is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. The Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators, podcasts by educators. For more, go to edupodcastnetwork.com.